Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Mimi. I'm Tracy. I'm Grandpa. I'm Petey. I'm Daniel. I'm Matt. And we're some of the veggie boys. And girls. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. Welcome back, everyone. It's so nice to see you. I've been in the farm market for the past hour working on getting things filled up and having it completely set up. It's not too warm, not too cold. It's kind of in the middle, but I think all this damp weather uh, it's making it feel chillier than it is, but it's nothing we can't deal with. We'll be fine. It looks like dad was doing some cleaning this morning. Although he was in there running the pressure washer, he was actually cleaning off the tractor. The last time the tractor was used, it was so dirty uh, that we couldn't even get the bucket unhooked. That's how much mud was there. Is there a better way to start off the day doing a little bit of cleaning? Probably, but we still had to get it done. We really had to turn the lights on this morning. It's kind of dark outside due to all the cloudy weather. So we got to be a little more thorough while we're collecting eggs. Try and not miss any because there are people who really want these eggs. Today is not feeding day for the chickens, so we will not be putting feed in. However, we are gonna be putting some straw down. We're gonna be putting some bedding down, and then we're also gonna be adding some to the nest. Even if they kick it out of the nest, that doesn't really matter as long as we put some in there. Some of the chickens like to keep the bedding in, and some like to kick it out. Regardless of that, it makes us feel better when we put bedding in there. So we're gonna put bedding in there. All the nests that we could fill have been filled with straw and whatever straw we had left we just put it on the ground for the chickens to scratch through and to have some extra bedding. Yesterday on the farm I wasn't filming but I'll run down some of the jobs that they got accomplished. They put a hay bale out for the pastured cattle. They go through them so quick that we're always adding hay out there. They also worked on grinding a lot of feed. They got the layer hen feed all taken care of and then they ground an entire wagon full of cattle feed. Yes, this entire wagon is full of feed. Oh, it's so much breakfast. When it's sloppy out, like it has been for the past couple weeks, it's kind of hard to go back and forth to the feed bin. Now the feed bin we always use, that was filled up also, uh, but we're trying something a little different. Now this wagon that we use for beans, wheat, corn, and potatoes, uh, it has an unloading system on it that makes it very valuable to us. So what we did was we just put grain in here and now we don't have to go back and forth. We can just unload all our grain right over here. It makes the job a lot simpler. We have been throwing the idea around about an auger system uh, that we can still feed out of our bin over there. But for now, this is gonna make work a little bit easier on us. And as you can see, this wagon holds a lot of grain. <laughs> That's so cool. Now we're not gonna be using the grain out of the wagon first. Uh, our bin is full and it's a little more difficult to get the grain out of there so we wanna empty that first. But dad said it was okay to have a demonstration this morning. So I'm gonna turn it on and show it how it works for you. So we have this motor hooked up right here and all we have to do is flip the switch. Yeah. 
and I was wrong. We're gonna have to go through the mud. But once we finally empty the bin, we won't need to go through the mud anymore, and that'll be exciting. Two on each feeder. And this is a half on each feeder. Good morning. I'm back in the area where we have our calves and we're working on moving some boards around. We try to keep an area small enough that only the little calves can get in, but big enough that they don't have to wonder where that spot is. And the problem is when you leave a big enough spot, uh, bigger calves get back here. And when I say bigger calves, I mean calves that weigh like 300 to 400 pounds. We want the calves that are in the 150 to 250 range able to fit back here. When the calves are a little larger, they will fight for their spot at the feeder, but these smaller calves, they just get pushed around so much, we like to have an extra space for them. And we're not sure, we think we just had the area a little too small. Uh, the little calves weren't able to find it and they weren't coming back here, so we opened it up a little more. We had to bring a saw over, but we did get our door opened up a little bit more. The calves were just not too interested in trying to come through there. Uh, a few of them did, but not all of them. So now that we've got it opened up a little bit more, it should be easier for them to move back and forth. The reason why we're spending so much time on this is the calves that we're trying to get uh, going back and forth, they were the ones that were in the greenhouse. So they're not used to going uh, between fence posts, between all this stuff. So we're just trying to make them feel a little more comfortable and make it a little easier on them. We're now in the kitchen and we're bothering Grammy. What are you making today, Grammy? More banana bread. Woohoo! More banana bread. She said not only is she making banana bread, but she's also making some zucchini bread, which can only tell you one thing. We had extra zucchini and extra bananas left over, which I'm not gonna complain about because I benefit. Now, before dad started pressure washing down there, he mentioned he had already taken care of the calves. So the calves, the pastured and penned up cattle, and the chickens are all taken care of for the morning. I wanted to come into our largest greenhouse and do a little looking around, making sure that we have stuff that we need for the new year coming up. Now, granted the day could come where we move all this stuff, which we probably will move it all. It's kind of in the way, but there are certain things I need to know where they are, like these 806 inserts. We use these a lot. Not only the 806 inserts, but also the 806 carriers. That's actually what all our flowers and our vegetable plants for sales go into. Now we will move flowers into four inch, uh, six inch, and then the hanging basket pots. I already know where all the six inch and four and a half inch pots are. Uh, those are also something we need to know about but the packs, if we can't find those, <laughs> that makes headaches. Time is moving quickly though, and very shortly, we're gonna be filling up this greenhouse again. Even though it's technically our slow time, there's still a lot of preparing that goes into this time of the year. Because if for some reason something didn't come on a shipment, or we can't find something, well, we better get working on it. And the more we familiarize ourselves with the place where things are, it makes work a lot easier when the time comes. Dad and I got hopped in the truck and we're now on our way to a feed mill that's about 40 minutes away from here. We're going to pick up some calf feed. We're looking to get a little better feed. I was down at the farm show and was talking to a feed mill and they encouraged us to try a different kind of calf feed. So uh, we are going to pick up uh, 30 bags of it to try it on a group of calves to see if it works better. That's one of the reasons why you go to those farm shows to learn more information. And as dad mentioned, when he was there, uh, he started doing some more thinking as he left and now we're on our way to a feed mill. Now, is there a reason why we haven't done this before? Uh, well, we were grinding our own feed, but they have it a little sweeter. They think it would start, uh, they would start eating better, quicker. Uh, as little calves, they can't eat too much. So the better quality feed you give them, quicker they'll grow and get bigger, ready to go out and pasture for spring. When we start feeding this new feed to our calves, we're gonna see they grow a little quicker and how they handle the weather. So it's something exciting and we can't wait to see. Dad and I have made it to the feed mill. We don't necessarily know where to go, uh, this is our first time here, so he is doing some looking around. Uh, but then we'll be able to pick up the stuff once we figure out what we're doing. Turns out I parked in the perfect spot. Would you look at that? Now that we've got everything loaded up, we're on the way home. The only concern is, I don't think we're gonna make it for lunchtime. So it's, that's kind of sad. We're gonna be home for lunch. Yeah, we're gonna make it home for lunch, but we're gonna be late. We're gonna be home for lunch. Dad and I are now home with the feed and just in time. Just in time to be late for lunch. Oh my. But that's okay, we'll let it happen once in a while. And you also may have noticed, I got a haircut. Kind of chilly out here, I need the hat on. 
There we go. That's better. Alrighty, let's see what we're having for lunch today. Woohoo! It looks like sandwiches are on the menu. And Grammy made chocolate cake. <sighs> Thank you, Grammy. Thank you, Rhonda. Now our afternoon has been all over the place. We've been moving a lot of things around and we had to run and grab some sawdust. Now that we're back with the sawdust and we've got the load dumped, we've got to push everything up onto the pile. So Daniel is getting the bucket on the skid steer loader so we can get all this pushed up in. Some of you may remember from last year when we had our sawdust shed packed completely full. It was very, very tall, almost all the way to the front. And thankfully, we usually can do it. There have been some years where we haven't been able to fill it all the way, and there have been some years where we've had too much. But when we have too much, we just take it to the local farmers in the area and share it. Just got all the cattle fed for the evening. I already had a full load of grain over here, so it was pretty simple. Got all the feed dumped into the feeders. The cattle are pretty excited. And that should wrap it up for animals. So what were you doing with the boys today? Hauling round bales and we went to get sawdust. How many run bales did they bring home? Nine clover and two alfalfa. We got the animals finished at perfect time because it has started pouring here. I noticed when I was on my way to feed animals that it was feeling a little on the colder side, so there must be a front moving through. Hopefully it won't be raining tomorrow because I do not feel like working in the rain again. Some things we do have though are some seed catalogs. We're trying to discuss what cherry tomatoes we want. Right here is an orange cherry that we found interesting. And then dad has a whole bunch of stuff written down here. As you can imagine, the farm market has not been too busy since it started pouring. So we decided to start putting stuff away. We've taken stuff off the shelves uh, and now we gotta move all the pallets in. Oh, it is not nice out. I forgot my stuff. Now I have my stuff. Lauren, what are we having for dinner tonight? Uh, cheeseburger casserole. Ooh, looking pretty good. And then our little princess is over here. No. I guess not. She is not over here. Alrighty, we have got everybody at the table, so you know what that means. This is where we're going to end the video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.